Van Gogh said, what would life be like if we had no courage to attempt anything? Don't overthink, keep it simple, and let's get painting. So a quick visit to my supermarket to pick up my tangerine here, so nothing fancy. So I traced down my outline here and also my paper is now stuck to my board. I'm using De La Rowney today and these amazing colours from Zen Art Supplies which are from the Serrano 24 Cool Colour Selection. I've only chosen a handful of the colours here, um, maybe one or two others and I will put everything that I'm going to be using in the description underneath this video along with these gorgeous brushes from their 12th piece synthetic set. All of these are really inexpensive. The brushes are 30 pounds for the entire lot. And I'm also using my little stubby old brush here to mix the colors. And once again, I will link everything in the description box underneath this video. But these brushes are perfect for this kind of painting. These are the colors that I've swatched out that help me select the colors that I'm going to use for the tangerine. And I begin by mixing two of the colors here, which are Hansa and Orange. Now, of course, if you don't have this wonderful set yourself, then you can use any colors that are similar within your own kit. So I have a clean glass of water and some kitchen paper. And to begin with, I'm going to be mixing the Hansa, which is the sort of um, very pale yellow color, along with the orange, and I'm mixing the two together. So the first brush that I'm going to be using is a number four round and all of these brushes have a really fine point which help get the detail in which is really great for later on in the painting but also big enough to create larger washes as well. So this has got a lovely fine tip and I love the fact that these brushes are synthetic and make application really really easy. Now because I'm using mixed media paper it does make the blending process a lot easier than watercolour paper so if you're new to watercolour paper painting I highly recommend that you try a mixed media paper this one's by Dale Rowney and I also recommend that you watch this video all the way through to see the tricky process unfold. I'm switching down a size here to push that pigment up against the pencil line like this noticing how I'm leaving little gaps in between the segments of the tangerine to create the illusion of that fluffy pith that you can see. Now watercolour painting is all about building up layers and we leave each layer to dry before applying the next. I think sometimes it's really tricky not to overthink your painting and to believe that you have to pick a really tricky subject but honestly something as simple as a tangerine can look really impressive and very easy to do. This painting took me no longer than about half an hour so it's something that's really really quick and easy and something that you can be proud of at the end of your painting. So I'm putting on this paper, this paint wet on dry, which means that I'll be applying it directly onto the paper. This segment was slightly oversaturated, so you saw me there just patting it dry with my kitchen paper before applying another layer. So painting need not be complicated. And as I said, you don't have to go out and look for the most elaborate things to paint. Sometimes they can be within your store cupboard or even your local supermarket. And it has a kind of festive feel as well, it being a tangerine. So these budget paints are super easy to handle, especially on this mixed media paper. You can see me using the tip of the brush here just to push that pig pigment around. And then I'm using a damp brush to soften the edges. work in a segment at a time, applying the paint, pattern my brush on the kitchen paper and then just softening it through like this, making sure that I leave the gaps in between each segment. We're not using white paint, we're just painting around it. This is called negative painting. and once again leaving gaps between each of the segments and on the segments themselves. Just applying the paint wet on dry. And just gently working through each piece. 
Now you saw, or you may have seen at the beginning of this video, that we have a free trace down line drawing and reference photograph to go with this video, and you can have access to these if you join our Facebook group, details of which will be in the description box underneath. It would be lovely if you could join us there. We are, we are a fast growing community and a lovely bunch of people. You can have access to all of the line drawings and reference photographs that accompany this YouTube channel, and also post your finished paintings there and have some feedback from me and also our wonderful community members. So do consider joining us there. So focusing on the bottom area of the tangerine now once again, just using the colours that are on my palette here and applying them to the base like this right up against that pencil line using the tip of my brush. using the very tip of the brush to push that paint right up to that pencil line. So just a quick word about these brushes. Oh, you get 12 brushes in this synthetic set and they are fine liner brushes. So really good for sort of fine detail or botanical work as I do here, or any kind of painting that requires um, a sharp pointed brush. So I mix in a little puddle of um, orange and yellow together with a little bit more of the yellow tone here and applying it straight onto the paper like this and just adding a little bit more of the orange tone which will go on the inside like this. The paint at this stage is slightly thicker but still thick enough to be movable. You don't want it to go sticky and muddy, just enough to cover that paper like this and then blend them together with a tiny bit of water as I'm doing here. So you can see that the outside edge of the peel here has a more yellow tone and the inside a more orange tone. And then just using that damp brush to merge the colours together, at the same time taking the paint down the outside like this. So this is a really good painting tutorial if you've got maybe no time to paint or you don't really feel like a sort of great painting project, something that's going to take you forever. Or maybe you just want a bit of a confidence boost so that you can paint a really quick painting that you can be proud of. So here I'm working wet in wet. Although the water does have a little bit of pigment on it, I'm just applying this all over the bottom section of the peel here with the number zero, sorry, the number one size brush, I think this is, and just, or any brush that's got a fine point, and just making sure that the water goes directly onto the paper where you want to drop the paint. So stay within that pencil line. And you can see me here just picking up that pigment and dropping it in wet on dry. So painting with watercolour, or indeed any paint, can be a really soothing process. So like I said, don't overcomplicate it and just get the paint onto the paper. and dropping it in wet on wet. This gives a slightly softer look. And I'm just using the residual paint on the brush here to outline the inside of the peel. Once everything is dry, I've cleaned down my palette and I'm just looking at my color chart that I've made here. And I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of Payne's Gray along with a small bit of warm sepia. This will form the shadow or at the base of the tangerine where it's sitting on the table and using my number two size brush to wet the paper again around the outside edge of the tangerine to work wet and wet. This will give a lovely soft blur as before. We don't want the color to look solid here. We just want to give the illusion of a shadow and to give the impression that the tangerine is sitting on the table. 
So dropping in the pigment, wet on wet, adding a little bit more here. So we've got a mixture of Payne's Grey and warm sepia. Just being careful around the outside of the tangerine, we don't want any of this pigment to touch the yellow colour and the orange colours that we've applied. Once I've applied the paint, I'm just adding a tiny bit of water to the base and blending it through. Tangerines always remind me of Christmas and the festive season. I wonder, do you have a fruit or something that reminds you of Christmas Day and the sort of festive season? Let me know in the comments below whether you have a sort of favourite Christmas fruit that really is synonymous with Christmas for you. I think another thing I used to remind me of uh, Christmas are chestnuts. It's all very, very seasonal and just very lovely. And I'm not a massive fan of Christmas, I have to say, but I do like the sort of festive, festive feel and the fairy lights and all that sort of thing. I'm not uh, a massive fan of Christmas though, I have to say. So let me know what your, Christmas, what your favorite Christmas memories are, your favorite Christmas food. Drop them in the comments below. So you can see I'm using that damp brush to blend out that paint. Had I been using a sort of finer watercolour paper for this, I wouldn't be able to blend them as well, I don't think. So going back to the first two colours and mixing them sort of 50-50 yellow and orange here, this time I'm adding a tiny bit of the red tone, this is permanent red, and um, another petal of warm sepia here. I'm applying this mix on the dry paper like this, but this time I'm applying it, leaving gaps over the first wash that we did. So in other words, we are creating sort of a darker tone around the initial washes that you can see. So you can still see the first wash underneath that darker tone. This gives the illusion of it having a really good, strong three-dimensional feel and it not looking flat. So make sure that you leave that first wash a little bit untouched and you can see it coming through like this. Just put in the darker tone around it and using the tip of my number 2.0 brush here just to go around the little section in the middle like this. And I'm just repeating the process on the other segments of the tangerine, making sure that I leave that first wash untouched in certain areas. And just using a damp brush to blend it through. And like I said before, because this is a mixed media paper, the blending is really, really easy. And I'm just using some of that darker red tone to enhance some of the segments here and there, as you can see. And I'll repeat the process on all of the other segments. So once again, now that everything's dry, I'm just using a tiny bit of the water that you can see on my palette here. This has got the smidgen, a suggestion of the yellow color within it, the orange color within it. And I'm just taking this all over the tangerine to just merge the colors together and also darken out some of that white tone that's a little bit too stark at the moment. So I'm just using the really, really fine glaze of water with a tiny bit of pigment just to soften those colors through. A 
let's look at the bottom half of the tangerine where we have the peel. So once again, the same colors as before, starting off with the red and orange tone. And as we hit the middle section of the tangerine, we can turn to the lighter, more yellowy tone. and more of the yellow red tone at the middle on the bottom. And you can see just adding a stipple in motion here to create the illusion of texture, still using that number 2.0 brush. I'm just wiggling, wiggling the brush just to create that bit of texture there. This is really easy to do. It's not complicated at all. And just using a few colors here, as you can see, and now using the tip of my brush to outline the peel on the side of the, or of the tangerine here. Once again, just pulling the paint into the paper like this, where I've put the pencil line. So now that this part of the peel is dry, I'm just adding some more water, wet in wet, and dropping in some pigment, exactly the same way as we did on the first wash, only of course this time it will be slightly stronger, and I'm enhancing the outside of it just like this, and just dropping in the pigment where I feel it is necessary to give the illusion of it being slightly textured. We don't want the colour to look flat, so I'm just sort of dipping between the colours on my palette and then just adding some water and blending it out towards the top. And we can still see that first wash of the underlying colour showing through. just added a tiny bit of the warm sepia to the orangey tones and I'm adding this on the inside of the peel that's turned that's sort of spinning around on the inside of the peel here um, it's slightly darker and we wanted to have the illusion of it being in shadow so this works really well here and I'm using the watered down version of all of these colors together on the bottom here just adding a tiny bit of yellow and painting this on the inside of the peel. It's looking too white at the moment. Although it's a very, very pale color, it's not a stark white. And of course, the mixed media paper that I'm using today is very, very white. And we just want to, turn it, to tone it down a little bit by using this color. And I'll put the same color on the top.
We can also take this colour all over the tangerine to take out some of the whiteness of the pith that's showing through. Just to let you know that we are on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, do consider following us there where we put um, behind the scenes paintings and also upcoming tutorials if you want a sneak preview. And if you are getting value from this video, do consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. We have new content every Tuesday. But that's not all. We also have a Patreon um, where we do botanical painting in further, in sort of greater detail. So if you'd like to know more about botanicals and really level up your botanical painting, do consider joining us there. We have brand new weekly, sorry, brand new monthly tutorials as well as many weekly vlogs. And um, I'll put the link in the description underneath this video. They are, I ought to mention, different from the tutorials that you see here on YouTube. Uh, created especially for patrons. So do consider joining us there. Okay, back to the job in hand. You can see me here dropping in the warm sepia color, wet on a sort of really damp paper here to create the illusion of some texture within the peel and using that tiny brush yet again to do this. And you can see that it's becoming sort of gently blurred as I'm dropping in that paint on the slightly damp paper. We want it to be really, really soft. So work wet and wet, but just let that paper dry off a little bit before dropping in that pigment. And I'm also applying this colour to the section of the peel here where it's turning in on itself. I did feel that it had a tiny little overlap at that point. And I'm using the Payne's Grey Mix to strengthen up the area underneath this tangerine. We've still got a way to go on this painting, but it really is a matter of just repeating the process. I'm going to stop talking as usual. I'm going to let you watch me finish this painting in peace. I'll say thank you for watching. And I'll play some music for you and I'll see you next week. It's white outside. Night is cold. Everyone's lighting candles in their homes. Yes, it's Christmas. It's a magic time. You can feel it in the air that every child got their hearts filled up with joy. Snow is falling down, all the colored lights lighting up this town. And as I walk outside, hear the Christmas choir sing, Merry Christmas to you. This time of year is a time to let our love eyes, our family and friends have a Christmas with so much love and with joy and laughter. Let us make memories that stay. Snow is falling down, all the colored lights lighting up this town. And as I walk outside, hear the Christmas choir sing, Merry Christmas to you.